Okay, it's uh, ooh, five o'clock on a given Thursday here at Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. We're doing global connections today uh, with our friend in Varanasi, India, Kartiki Mishra. Welcome to the show, Kartiki. Hi, dear. I'm fine. I'm pretty good. It's lockdown, man. Yeah, well, I'm glad we got connected. It's just sometimes it's a long way from here to India. We can see you fine. We can hear you reasonably well. Now, you know, I, I, um, I think the big news, and you mentioned this to me before, the big news in India is COVID, that is coronavirus. And I wonder if you could give us uh, an idea about what that news is and how, how COVID is affecting India these days. Uh, uh, it's it's uh, quite now the strength of patients is increasing day by day. And uh, the count is around, the total number of people who are infected now is around 50,000. 45,000 or 40,000 cases are active. There are uh, 1,700 deaths around. And 15,000 people have recovered as well. So the, uh, there is a uh, constant rise in number of patients every day. Around uh, 1,000 or 1,500 patients every day are emerging uh, after being tested in India doing testing uh, rapidly and we are trying to increase our testing phase uh, so that we can improve our uh, uh, data on this because if we don't test properly we don't uh, get uh, proper information how many people are being affected uh, due to that coronavirus in varanasi itself i guess around 77 people are infected by the coronavirus there is one casualty and 10 people have recovered in, in varanasi so it's, it's a pandemic throughout India. Uh, all of India is it is a complete lockdown in India uh, uh, since March, and it's May now. And I think this lockdown will continue till end of May, I believe. But the government is trying to move uh, that lockdown for economic purposes because it's not a pandemic economy. Mm. Well. Um... You know, India is pretty advanced on medicine, and this is a, a challenge. So far, India has done pretty well, but it could take off any time, as you say. And I wonder, uh, what about the social distancing? Uh, are people staying at a distance? Are they wearing face masks? Uh, yes, masks are now compulsory, but everyone who's going outside should wear mask, mask and gloves. It's, it's pretty necessary now. People are trying to follow that. Uh, the problem is sometimes uh, people neglect it also when they are too busy or they need something. They don't think about that. But now, as the government is uh, increasing the awareness about social distancing and all these things, people are getting much more aware these days and are now following. Uh, I think it will take some time to accept that fact of social distancing because it's totally something new that we haven't taken uh, prior to this challenge in the world. So I believe the social distancing will be one of the It will take some time, but after this coronavirus pandemic, it will be a permanent thing as well. Mm. You know, uh, I, I read that uh, you have some very interesting mm, um, initiatives going on. One, for example, is uh, you put a bunch of doctors or medical students on an airplane and you fly them from one part of India to another uh, in order to deal with any outbreak. Um, that's very impressive. Is that happening as a regular matter? Uh, yes, uh, government is trying to take that initiative. And our medical teams and uh, doctors are responding quite well. Uh, and certainly I believe that uh, this, this pandemic has led to us in a stage that uh, we can improve our medical, medical infrastructure if we uh, think about corona right now. And, uh, we are trying to implement that. We are trying to uh, improve our medical uh, staff training. We are trying to provide PPE kits and everything, everything possible uh, to our staff. And people are being taken, uh, taken care of, and the medical staff is working quite hard these days on this patients. And we are calling them Corona Warriors, our police staff, our medical staff. <laughs> so we are working on the uh, front line, and, and it's, it's a Government is trying to uh, appreciate the efforts of people, so it's a yeah. thing to do. I, I read also that that you have trains. India has a, a, a very well-developed train system. 
uh, and the trains cross India back and forth. And you're also using the train system to deliver uh, doctors and uh, medical professionals from one part of India to another and to deal with any outbreak. Is, is that happening as a regular matter? Yes, it's happening. Uh, and uh, when we are talking about trains, uh, I will say that uh, government is trying to use those trains also as quarantine centers if needed. So the trains are also being used as uh, uh, Public transportation is still completely locked in India. That there is no train traveling for traveling purposes. It's okay. Some some liberal uh, occasions are there for for uh, uh, for working in part of, uh, in various parts of India. These people are in trouble because they need to travel to their homes for uh, whatever benefit they need or whatever situation they have to control them because they are losing jobs as well. Uh, now uh, money is becoming an issue. So it's, it's to control this pandemic and improve the economic situation as well. And I think government has fared pretty well till now, but we have to improve its pace because now things will get, uh, according to AIMS Delhi, Director of Delhi said that the peak of coronavirus may be in July or June. So uh, things are difficult ahead also. Yeah, I mean, I, I read that, um, I'm not sure how far it's going to go, but in the near term, uh, the government has decided to try to reopen parts of the economy. Um, that's the same it's the same phenomenon that's happening in the U.S., where the government wants to reopen parts of the economy. Uh, and it's not clear that we're ready in the U.S. We don't have sufficient masks. We don't have a, a developed testing system. Uh, we don't have ventilators for hospitals or, um, in the ICU part of the hospital. Um, and I wonder if it's the same thing in, in India. I mean, do you feel that India is ready uh, to go back and start up its economy again now? No, no, no. it's not possible. But the, the very dilemma of the government is in that uh, people are struggling with power. The, uh, the people who are working uh, in construction sites, the people who are jobs, the people working in the informal uh, uh, sector, very much from this lockdown. So for them, government is taking some initiatives that we is now locked down for industries, for workers, if social distancing is followed in those particular industries. If we take care of some uh, rules and regulations by the government, then we can provide some industries to open up because poverty is very important. The people, uh, the people, the workers are facing the greatest with the coronavirus. And it's a challenge. If you think about coronavirus, uh, so the question arises, sometimes poverty leads to a situation that we can't close up the economy for a long time. So some small steps are being taken that uh, a complete shutdown is not now possible. So some liberal uh, liberties are being given to people. It's not in last year, but very few. Well, it's like uh, the U.S., you know, you, you want to shut down an economy with, you know, in, in your case, uh, you're, you're four times the size of the U.S. Uh, you have 1.3 billion. We, we have 300 million. Um, and um, it's, it's, it's traumatic to shut down an economy that big. And it's going to take some time to bring it back up again. So I wonder how you feel your, your business graduate and you're in your graduate business school now, um, I wonder how you feel about trying to make uh, an economy uh, come come alive again uh, with that many people and that many, you know, uh, connected parts. Maybe, let me repeat the question. You know, you, you are a very big country. You are uh, 1.3 billion. Now, we are only 300 million and change. Uh, if we shut the economy down, it's complicated. But if, if you shut the economy down, it's more complicated. And I wonder how you feel as a business student, how you feel about trying to bring it back up again. It's not going to be easy, is it? Yeah, it, it's not going to be definitely easy because 1.3 1, 1. billion people, as you said, it's quite much in numbers as well as in strength. 
So uh, the problem is the more the population you have, the more the number of chances of people being unemployed, more chances of getting uh, people uh, in poverty if, if things don't uh, improve in future. So government is trying to take steps. That some sectors will be open, the IT sector, the uh, sector which is uh, using software will open up, some industries will open up, but uh, the complete overall improvement of economy is not possible in today's scenario. It will be happening somewhere in future, I, I see around December or January, because this coronavirus pandemic will stay with us for a very long time. Uh, not mm -hmm. just in India, but in the rest of the world as well. The, uh, I think the number of patients are increasing in the United States as well. 11, 11, 1 million people or 1 million plus people are affected in the United States. Uh, 70,000 casualties. It's damaging US as well. It's, uh, global economy is in trouble right now. Oh, sure, absolutely right. And, and likely to get worse, I would say. So what about what about the people in India who don't have uh, reserve funds? What about the people in India who could be hungry? You know, they don't have a job, they don't have any income, they don't have anything to fall back on. Is the government of India, Mr. Modi, um, is he is the government of India able to help them and to pass out food, to pass out money, so they don't starve? What what's being done about that? Uh, the government is trying to do that, that uh, no people should get hungry or get into poverty due to this. So some efforts are being taken by the government uh, into uh, the uh, people, not just in government, who are trying to uh, send rations and food to people who are living around the city. Due to lockdown, no one can travel. So government is delivering food from door to door. It's government initiative. Uh, and second thing is that medicines are also there. If, if medicine is needed, the government is also providing medicine home to home. And and people, I think the most important thing is that it's not about the government helping; it's about people taking initiatives. That's one thing happening in India. But people from all the walks of life are now coming together and help, to help the unprivileged people are in our society. It, it, it's more happening in the world. Some, if someone is coming to my door, I am trying to help. If someone is coming to the uh, organization, the organization is trying to help. So it's now a people thing that people are now taking initiative to help the underprivileged people around them. And it's mm. happening. Well, you've had, you've had issues with Kashmir. Uh, in fact, last time, a couple of times ago when we spoke, there were issues with Kashmir. And, uh, and of course, there's always issues with Pakistan. And I'm, and I'm wondering uh, how those countries are doing and how the relationship of India uh, with uh, Kashmir and Pakistan may have changed because of the epidemic. Uh, can you talk about that? Yes, uh, look, now the whole world is facing that coronavirus pandemic, so we are hardly rising about Kashmir and Pakistan. So our Prime Minister took an initiative in the very early stages to set up a uh, uh, meeting with the Pakistani counter uh, leadership in, in Pakistan as well. Uh, that the SARC summit was taken place. The seven neighboring countries uh, met via, via digital means like Zoom, like we are talking. And we discussed about how can we face that uh, challenge of uh, the coronavirus pandemic. Kashmir will remain an issue, I think, politically, but we must also believe that it, it's not the time to discuss about Politics, it's time to face the reality. Pakistan will, they will be facing the same thing if they don't take the right steps and if we don't cooperate together, at least not right now. But even after that time, some terrorist attacks, attacks or activities are being taken place in Kashmir and the government is trying to stop that as well as on border. So, the pandemic has a very great impact on that and I think the Kashmir issue will be left for a long time. Uh, if if we uh, look at terrorist attacks, we will deal with it. But right now, politics on international scale is not necessary between any nation, I believe. Mm. Good. Uh, so I wanted to ask you about Varanasi. I wanted to ask you about your school. I wanted to ask you about your your own you know your own lifestyle. 
Uh, can you talk about how things are doing in Varanasi? Are you are you locked in right now? Have you been spending time only at home? Are you getting out much? Uh, do you go to the market? Uh, do you, how do you spend your time? Because you know everybody that I know is is staying home um, and doing Zoom, you know, communications like this. And I wonder if it's the same for you. Yeah, uh, it's a lockdown in India, and it will remain till 17th of May, at least, at least from uh, right now, uh, till, from my point of view. But I am, I am working. I think uh, uh, college is working through Zoom mode only. The assignments are being provided online. We are submitting assignments online. Uh, tests are being taken online. So everything is now Zoom, I should say. And uh, I think that uh, this. Uh, this thing, uh, passing time has become a hard activity because now I am at home, so I uh, I have a lot of free time. So I can read a book, watch a movie, watch a series uh, after uh, assignments and all the work, preparing about the test. So uh, I am getting a lot of time at home, so a lot of activities are there. So I am enjoying it as well. Yeah, I have the same experience. You know, there's a, there's a benefit to being able to catch up on things and, and read and, uh, and watch entertainment and documentaries. Um, there's, a, there's a benefit of being home. Uh, although some people, you know, feel cooped up and some people, mm, they do not abide by the lockdown and they, they violate that, go out in the street and, and take a risk and, and risk other people that way. Now, if, if you did that or if somebody that you know did that, went out in the street, violated the lockdown, what would happen? Would the police do something about it? Yeah, uh, government is quite strict about that. People who are breaking lockdown, they will consider as criminals and non bailable criminals. They will not get bail as well if they get into jail. Government is quite strict about this lockdown. If you are not following it, you will end up in jail. And it is quite possible. And, uh, yeah. and strict measures are being taken. Police is on ground that if someone breaks that lockdown, in, in a very non-serious manner, if, if, if he or she takes it very casually, the government will take action. But people are uh, like people are people. If, if whether it's United States or India, some people take it casually, but the rest of them are very serious, and people are staying at home. You know, I I know you from our discussions well enough that you follow international events and that you are following this as we are um, as an extraordinary turn of history. Um, and I wonder what your thought is about where it's all going, uh, how it's going to affect the planet, how it's going to affect global relations and um, what do you want to call it, humanity and civilization. Uh, because we, we don't see the light at the end of the tunnel yet. People can talk about, uh, you know, the, the, the end of the lockdown and the resurrection of the economy, but there's no certainty about that where or when or how. And I wonder what your thinking is, because uh, I would I'd really appreciate knowing how you feel about this and what your own personal philosophy is about it. Yeah, I think mean, uh, this coronavirus pandemic has to change in the world. And, and the world will not remain the same even after this coronavirus pandemic. The political relations between countries will change. The style of trade which we are doing, which will, that will also change. The lifestyle which we are currently living right now, that will also change. We might see a change in the global world order. Countries becoming more protectionist, the globalization being coming down because as this has led to that more homegrown industries might be possible in future. As we can say that uh, US is at Cold War with China due to that. That uh, Trump is President Trump is blaming China that they have made such thing or he's calling that Chinese virus. President Trump said that. I heard that. So I think uh, China will be drastically affected. Industries will uh, I think move from out uh, out of China, and this will affect the whole world in such a manner that I see that next five to ten years I think. Uh, uh, economies will be closed, it will be more protectionist, and uh, and it, it will take some time uh, to recover and to go on the track which we were on in 2019. And it's very possible, it's very possible. 
Yeah, uh, to talk, let's talk about China for a minute. And I always uh, always ask you what you think about uh, what what Trump is doing. I mean, right now he's into name calling with Xi Jinping, and Xi Jinping uh, is responding. Um, and the two of them, uh, they may at some level claim that they're friendly, but it doesn't seem that way from their public statements. And I'm and I, I'm wondering if you see this as a threat um, to uh, you know global relationships. And, uh, and I'm also interested in knowing how how India might be affected by an argument between the U.S. and China, uh, the way it seems to be evolving. Mm-hmm. China is a very piece of puzzle in this coronavirus pandemic, I believe, because uh, the home origin of coronavirus was China, and they tried to uh, cover it up. The information was concealed. The, the, the revealing the fact that we are facing the threat of this level, China did not reveal that information. So not only United States, Italy, Australia, and all the nations of Europe are now blaming China or suing China for that uh, uh, pandemic, of the casualties and the damages China has made. So uh, keeping that in mind, I believe that uh, in future, the tensions may increase between United States and China. And this tension has led to a situation that uh, the companies which are leaving China may end up in India. It's a very possibility that uh, the low labor costs which you are getting in China, you might get in India. So it's an opportunity for India, but India is also trying to balance that fact that if we get into trouble between uh, United States and China, uh, we might face some issues because China is the uh, third largest trading partner of India. And I think uh, this has led to a situation of balancing that India will try to balance between United States and China, that things get managed somehow and we move on to future with this uh, balanced policy. Mm. So is your, you're not too far from the uh, northern border in, uh, of uh, India in, uh, in uh, uh, Baranasi, I I wonder, is the, is the northern border closed? Are the borders of India closed right now? Uh, is there is, is it porous between uh, India and the, the uh, surrounding countries, including China? Yes, the borders are closed. There is no travel between countries and neighboring countries. Uh, mm. it's, even flights are being stopped. So there is no travel between nations. Any kind of travel, it's, it's not possible in such scenario. So even even state to state, city to city is not possible. So I can't imagine a travel between nations will be possible. And it's not, and I and I'm not seeing that in future that it will be very possible as well. But I'm not seeing that flights will take place in in future as well in months come months coming in uh, July or June. People will take precautions, and I believe that uh, international flights and travel will somehow will begin after July or August. Yeah, as we say, knock wood, knock wood. Um, so, Mr. Modi, how how is he doing? Is he popular? Uh, is he popular with you? Is he popular with the people that you you talk to? Uh, is the country behind him? Does the country believe he's doing the right thing? Yes, I think uh, as a prime minister, it's now a, a global threat. So, as a prime minister, every single. Uh, Chief Minister or Governor, what we call in the United States, similar forces called Chief Minister in India. Every Chief Minister, every federal level government in India is now trying to work with the central government, with the uh, with the Modi government, so that uh, so we can deal with this pandemic. Because it's it's not now about politics; it's now about handling the issue. And I I am very positive, and I am very happy that. Politics is being served in India, but uh, we are not looking at politics right now. Uh, I think we, uh, people are also, the political parties may see politics, but people are not seeing politics right now. The only uh, issue we have to deal with is coronavirus, and that's the only thing that government is having in mind right now. Politics will begin after this, but not right now. <laughs> it's not the best time right to start politics. Well, I know that you have a lot of access to American news, and you know that in America, a good percentage of the people feel that uh, Trump has been uh, very unsuccessful, uh, very misguided in his uh, his actions and policies around the coronavirus. 
Um, and he's uh, motivated in large part um, by his political aspirations to win the election in November. But I wonder how, uh, you know, I've asked you this question before. I wonder how you and, and the people you know in India, uh, how you feel about the effectiveness of, of Trump's policies and actions on, um, on the coronavirus. I think uh, one thing which I can say that President Trump did not took coronavirus seriously in the beginning. When the threat reached a particular level, then the government of the United States took action to curb that. And even right now, I think Trump is eager to open up the lockdown. I am seeing that possible. But he is quite excited how, how I can end that lockdown and get the economy back on track. But uh, at least from my point of view, the United States is not in a position right now to end the lockdown and to bring back the economy. And talking about the United States election in November, I don't think that elections will happen if, if things remain like that in future. Uh, we, we, you may have to postpone the election. It, it, it's quite possible. If the Olympics can get postponed, so can the U.S. election. So, uh, so that there is a possibility that elections will face the Trump Trump might face a very great threat in elections because he is not uh, he is not handling that uh, situation quite well. President Trump should improve his uh, way of dealing with this coronavirus and be more sensitive towards people of the United States. And I think he can do that, but it will need some time. He is kind of, uh, he is not right now in the dealing more with coronavirus. He is much more in political mode of winning the U.S. elections. Joe Biden is there in competition. He is closing in. Joe Biden is closing in with his uh, president. So I think that uh, U.S. elections will face uh, some challenges this time. Now, well, who do you support? Uh, look, diplomatic answer, I think, is because... Uh, I will say that uh, uh, any president who is beneficial for India will be good for me as well. So whether it is Trump or Joe Biden. <laughs> Let me ask you another uh, another question. So would you support Joe Biden? Uh, yes, he was vice president during Barack Obama, so we have good relations. Yeah, but now what about uh, his vice president? You know, that issue is not yet resolved. And uh, we, every day we wonder, are you there? Um, so, uh, Carnegie, so do you, well, you might support Biden then, uh, for president, but my question, uh, my question is, um, what about his vice president? Everybody is waiting for Biden to make a decision about his vice president, and he's already said he's going to select a woman as his vice presidential running mate. Do you have any thoughts about who should be his vice presidential running mate? I think Tulsi Gabbard can be vice president, it's possible. If, uh, she was in, 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 in she was running elections, she might become vice president. Uh, and I think uh, uh, Joe Biden will give a very tough competition to Donald Trump this time because uh, this 2020 will be a very challenging thing for President Trump as well. And U.S. elections will get interesting this time, quite interesting that he might win. Because uh, prior to this pandemic and the situation being uh, uh, serious, I was thinking that Trump might have a chance at winning the election. But right now, I think President Trump is uh, quite poorly handling this situation. This might affect his approval rating in the U.S. election. So I think this, will, this U.S. election will be one of the most interesting we will see in entire history. That's what you have seen. Yeah. Well, as you know, many people in the United States uh, see Trump as dismantling our democracy, as dismantling our uh, democratic government uh, balance of power between the, the branches of government, very concerned that if he wins another term, uh, he will become a dictator. Uh, he will dismiss Congress, and he will erode you know, the courts, um, and he will, he will, the law will be with him only. Um, a, a very great concern. I mean, you have... You know, India is a great democracy, a fabulous democracy. And I wonder how people in India feel about, um, you know, the, the decline of American democracy in this administration. One, one writer in Ireland wrote a piece which, which was very resonant. And he said, you know, in the past, um, the, the people in Europe and the EU felt that the United States was a world leader. Now they feel pity 
for what is happening. Pity, he said. And I wonder how the people in India feel about this decline of democracy. Hmm. Uh, democracy, he said, but I think uh, democracy is all about people's trust in government. But how much people trust government is in proof of democracy. But, uh, I can personally say that uh, it's not about president or prime minister power, it's about people. If people decide to put someone and get together, no one can stop them. And it's fairly simple. And when talking about democracy, Sometimes, uh, one thing which I have observed to Indian politics is that when Prime Minister Modi went to elections, uh, politically, and with, um, that also with a very landslide, the landslide victory, people saw him as a kind of dictator that uh, who can't be stopped. But it's with a perception that when you, when you win in a drastic manner, in a landslide, that people say that you, you become a threat. But I'm, I'm not saying that, but it's very possible that uh, sometimes that government's approach might become quite uh, hard with people. It's an issue. But democracy is the question that I can say that the uh, collective intellectual of people is much more powerful than the government. People always choose what is right for them. And I think uh, we are very wise as citizens, being, being democratic nations, United States and India. I think that people of United States and people of India choose the right thing, uh, changing at that particular time. At that point of time, who was right for us. And this will happen in future. Democracy will not change. The governments which are functioning will not change. The only thing that we can change is the mindset, how people are approaching the democracy. Now, Carnegie, you know, I feel uh, we've talked about this before, uh, that you're, you're an up-and-coming, you look more than a student, you have a global awareness about you, and uh, I've always thought that it would be nice for us to meet in public, I mean, in, in person. I've always thought it would be nice to meet in person. Um, but it seems like the coronavirus is uh, just another obstacle to that meeting. I, but I continue to hold on to the thought that one day we'll get to meet in person. And short of that, uh, maybe in a few weeks we could get back together again on the phone here and uh, explore the changes, the changes in India, and of course the changes in the United States and other countries as this virus goes on. Some people say, of course, it's changing the world, and the question is in what direction is the world changing? So keep watching. We'll keep watching. And we'll compare notes the next time. Mm, definitely, definitely. <laughs> Thank you, Carnegie. Karaji Mishra, very nicely in you. Join him from time to time and learn so much. Thank you so much. Take care. Namaste. Welcome. Yeah.